the news in detail. South Sudan government has backed the African Union's position, which called on Russia to end hostilities and respect Ukraine's sovereignty. In a statement issued last week, the AU also called on Russia and Ukraine to establish a ceasefire and open political negotiations to preserve the world from the consequences of planetary. The African countries are being represented by Kenya, Gabon and Ghana in the UN Security Council. Kenya represents the East African countries, while Gabon is representing the Central African countries and Ghana represents the West African countries. Last week, Kenya's ambassador to UN Security Council condemned Russia's decision to send troops into Ukraine. Martin Kimani said the territorial integrity and sovereignty of Ukraine stands breach. He added that the Charter of the United Nations continues to wild under the relentless assault of the powerful. Meanwhile, the South Sudan Deputy Foreign Affairs Minister says Kyrgyz regime supports a foreign policy that provides for non-interference in the affairs of other countries. However, Deng Dao told Iredio that the country stands with African Union position on the invasion of Ukraine by Russia. Uh, stand with the African group in the UN, Secur in the UN Security Council, where we have three members of the African uh, continent representing the African uh, voice. We have uh, Republic of Kenya, that represent the East Africa. And then we have uh, Republic of Gabon, that represent uh, the Central Africa. And then we have Republic of Ghana, that represent the Western Africa. So these three three are representing uh, the voice of the African continent. Our stands as the African uh, continent is together. And our ambassador in, in New York stands with this group. So we don't have a separate uh, stand out of the African continent. In a separate development, Deng Dao said the only five South Sydney students who were in the war town Kharkiv, city of Ukraine, have crossed into Poland from Ukraine. He said arrangements are underway to airlift them back to South Sudan. We had very few students in a place called Kharkiv. Kharkiv is in eastern, eastern uh, Ukraine where the, the bomb bombardment and the conflict started. So the five students that were in Ukraine, all of them have crossed to Poland. The first three crossed on Saturday and the last one uh, crossed on Sunday. So mm -hmm. five of them, uh, three girls and two boys are now uh, in Poland. The medical charity Medicine Sans Frontiers has suspended movements to support health facilities outside Yay Town following burning of two of its vehicles by alleged NAS group of General Thomas Cirillo. MSF said the attack occurred on Monday morning. In a statement, the charity organization said seven staff wearing MSF identification and traveling in two clearly marked MSF vehicles were traveling to Minyori on the Yay Maridi Road going to support treatment for malaria, pneumonia, and diarrhea the three of the leading causes of infant mortality in South Sudan. Before they arrived, the medical team was stopped by a large group of armed men and forced at gunpoint to disembark from their vehicles. They were then taken into the bush where a group of civilians were also being held by the armed group. According to MSF, its team members were threatened and robbed of both MSF property and personal belongings. Sandra Lamach is the MSF operation coordinator. She said, and I quote, we are deeply shocked by this unacceptable attack on the provision of neutral and impartial humanitarian assistance for communities in need as a result of the attack. Our outreach movements to communities surrounding Ye have been suspended until appropriate security conditions can be reestablished, which would permit us to safely continue our life-saving work, end quote. MSF said, following the incident, its staff were released without physical injury, but the two MSF vehicles had been set ablaze, completely destroying them and forcing the team to evacuate to safety on food. It is an independent, neutral and impartial humanitarian organization which has been working in South Sudan for more than 40 years. The Troika countries have condemned allegations of human rights violations and abuses, including killing, rape, destruction of homes, and looting of humanitarian supplies in Unity State. According to the United Nations mission in South Sudan, fighting broke out last month in Mirmir Payam, Unity State, between the Sudan People's Liberation Army in opposition and armed youth. In a statement released yesterday and seen by iRadio, the United Kingdom, Norway and the United States said the fighting reportedly spilled to several villages in Koch, Mayendit and Lair counties. In the fighting, the peace 
peacekeeping mission said civilians were killed, injured, and forced to flee their homes. Also, it said nine women were sexually assaulted and civilians' property have been destroyed and humanitarian supplies looted. The Troika called upon the state and national leaders to denounce the brutality and intervene to halt the violence. They also urged the new unity government to conduct transparent and timely investigations of the allegations and to identify and hold accountable the perpetrators regardless of their affiliation. The Troika further urged all sides to seek a peaceful resolution of differences through sincere dialogue and conflict mitigation of efforts. You're listening to I Radio News. A South Sudanese and a Ugandan national have gone missing along the Tambra Yambi Road in Western Equatorial State. The two young men, believed to be in their 30s, left Tambra Town on motorbike from Yangiri on Saturday at around 12 p.m. Opoya, Joseph, Ugandan, and Ganiko, Zamba, a South Sudanese, reportedly disappeared around Mabia area, situated about nine miles away from Tambra Town. One of the members of Uganda community in Western Equatoria, who spoke to iRadio on condition of anonymity, is demanding for their colleague release. This colleague Joseph Opoya is a Ugandan. He has a shop in Yambio, hardware. He has his vehicle, a lorry, dealing with construction, dealing with the people who are natives here. So it's like that. Always. He gets work from World Division. What we need is only our person back. Any kind of power, any kind of solution we need from the government or from anyone who is, who is capable. What we need is our person alive. When contacted by iRadio, the Commission of Tambra County confirmed the disappearance of the two young men. Matthew Mabenge said he has dispatched a security team to search for the two men. At around 21 past 12, the contractor, there is a foreigner from Uganda by name Opey Joseph, he left Tumbura for Yengiri for maintenance in Yengiri. Then from there he disappeared. Up to this moment we don't see him. I've managed to send the security apparatus at least to find his way about, but we are still assessing to find where he has gone. Either he has killed or not, but we are still in process. We are told it is Ope, Joseph, and uh, Gan Kozamba. The two were traveling to inspect the drilling of a borehole in Yangri before they went missing. The Ministry of Roads and Bridges has signed a memorandum of understanding with an Egyptian construction company to rehabilitate the Nimule Juba Highway. The Cairo-based Oraskom construction company is also expected to do maintenance of the eroding highway. That is according to the Under Secretary in the Ministry of Roads and Bridges, Peter Quart. Quart said the project is estimated to cost 30 million US dollars. It may take a year, but with the opening up of the road, we will be jumping from the bad spot to the next spot so that we make keep the road open throughout and we come back and complete some of the areas that we are leaving behind. So this is a very expensive kind of exercise and you will need patience from our uh, people of Republic of South Sudan and you need cooperation of the communities to make sure that you help this company to complete their work without any hindrance. For his part, Mina Makram, the representative of Orascom Construction Company said, وشرفني ان انا اكون في جنوب السودان ونشارك في تطوير طريق ده وزي ما احنا شاركنا في تطوير مشاريع كتير في طرق بلدنا بنحلم ان احنا نخلي جوبا وساو السودان افضل ولينا الشرف ان احنا نطور فيها ونفضل مستمرين في التطوير فيها تحت قياده الحكومه الموقره وبالتعاون مع شركه اموكو the project estimated uh, to complete this year is set to start soon. 
The Speaker of the East African Legislative Assembly has criticized South Sudan Minister for East African Community Affairs, Dengalor Kual, for consistently not attending the House sitting. Martin Ngoga noted that since Deng was appointed Minister of EAC Affairs in 2020, he never stepped his foot into Arusa for proceedings. After his appointment, he took oath online. Yesterday, as the ELA EALA was about to start discussing the integration of South Sudan into the bloc, an MP complained of Dengalor's absence. Dr. Abdallah Makama, who is representing Tanzania, the EAC parliament, said the discussion was about South Sudan and there was need for the minister to attend. I'd like now to know, because now we are having very important reports that are going to be tabled to this house on integrating the Republic of South Sudan with the, in the, with the ESC integration. How we're going to speed up the integration of the Republic of South Sudan and the, the colleague from South Sudan, who is supposed to be the government representative, does not even make it here, does not even come virtually. Reacting to the concern, the speaker of EALA, known as IALA, Martin Goga describes Minister Dengalor's absenteeism, very unfortunate, something he said is offending the House. Yes, I, I do. So should we start with the process of integrating the minister before we integrate the Republic of South Sudan? <laughs> <laughs> eh? <laughs> so it, it is a very unfortunate situation. If it was a one-off incident, if it was a one-off incident, it wouldn't be an issue. But this is someone we have never seen here. So it, it, it causes us honestly to question well, the motive or the commitment. I don't know how we can put it. In any case, honorable members, in any case, this is about the Republic of Saudi Sudan that is bigger than any particular individual. So we shall continue with our discussion. The sitting which is which is started yesterday is expected to continue today. However, Mary Mugenyi, who represents Uganda, suggested that Minister Alor attend today's session virtually if he cannot do it in person. You're listening to I Radio News and now to the international scene powered by MTN. One, two, three. <laughs> One million. Two million. Yes. Yes, yes, it's time to celebrate MTN 2 million. MTN has reached over 2 million customers and still counting. Are you with over 2 million subscribers? Why won't you trust MTN? To enter the draw, get an MTN SIM card today and get free 10 minutes every day for 3 months and 500 MB every month for 3 months. And on top of that, qualify to enter a draw to win 2 million SSP cards. Shabi, what are you waiting for? Buy an MTN MTN SIM card today and get to win 2 million SSP. Yes, when MTN says 2 million SSP, it's 2 million for one lucky Junubin. Second winner gets 200,000 SSP, 10 winners get 20,000 SSP, and others get lots of MTN branded prizes. Join MTN, the biggest family in South Sudan, and enjoy such amazing offers. MTN, everywhere you go. You're listening to I Ready News, and here is a court Emmanuel with stories making headlines in the region and beyond. Good afternoon, Okot Emmanuel. Good afternoon, Memo. Let's look, have a look at a round of stories making headlines in the region and across the globe. Starting neighboring Uganda, a Uganda novelist charged with insulting President Yuri Museveni has taken the government to court over his alleged torture by soldiers. Kakwenza. Ruki Rabasaja was arrested in December after posting tweets insulting Museveni and his son Muhozi Kenerugaba. He denied the charges. He wants the East African Court of Justice to declare that his arrest, detention and torture were illegal. The award-winning writer fled to the East African nation last month after being granted bail by a court. Elsewhere, a cargo ship that was carrying thousands of luxury cars has sunk off the Portuguese Azor Archipelago nearly two weeks after it caught fire. The ship named Felicity Asse was transporting around 4,000 4, cars such as Porches and Bentleys. The vessel was on its way to Rhodes Island in the United States from the German port of Emden when the fire broke out. All of its crew members were evacuated when the first the fire broke out on February 16. And finally, 
As fighting continues in Ukraine, the conflict is also continuing to push up global oil prices despite new measures aimed at calming markets. Brent crude, the international benchmark for oil prices, has hit 113 US dollars a barrel, making the highest level since June 2014. There was even after the International Energy Agency member agreed to release 60 million barrels of oil from emergency stockpiles. Russia is one of the biggest energy producers in the world and investors are worried that oil or gas supplies could be affected. Those were all making round of stories in the region and across the globe. Back to you, La Suba Memo. Thank you indeed. Our court, Emmanuel. You're listening to I Radio News, and now we move to the world of sports with Emmanuel Achille. Thank you, La Suba Memo. We begin with locals in South Sudan Cup 2020. Women Al Hilal Wow FC and Kukutori to face Nile City Yambio and Ye join stars this afternoon in the semi final of the Cup. The first game between Kukutorit and Ye Joint Stars will take place at Bulu Playground at 2 p.m. Meanwhile, Nile City FC will play Al Hilal FC in the second game at 4 in the semi final. Elsewhere, Leicester boss Brendan Rodgers said having Jamie Vardy back gives his side a huge boost after the striker made a goal scoring return from injury at Burnley to give the Foxes their first league win of 2022. The 35 year old forward was introduced from the bench for his first appearance of the year and played a huge role in earning his side all three points by setting up James Madison for the opener before setting the game with a close range header. It was his 10th Premier League goal of the season, but his first since late November and gave his boss hope that they can finish the season strongly after a run of five matches without a win in their striker's absence. Substitute Josh scored a fine winner in extra time as Middlesbrough stunned Tottenham to reach the quarterfinals of the FA Cup. Sustained by a sellout crowd at the Riverside for the first time in five years, Chris Wilder's side, who beat Manchester United in the last round, matched their Premier League opponents throughout and broke the deadlock in the 107th minute. Josh latched on to Matt Cook's pass before the 19-year-old turned an effort beyond Hugo Lloris and into the far corner from a tight angle. Tottenham hope Antonio Conti is the manager to end their 14-year wait for the trophy, but the North London club will have to wait at least another season. And finally, Ukraine's Elena Vitolina says it is her mission to unite the tennis community behind her country after beating Russian Anastasia Potapova in the Monterey Open first round. Vitolina, wearing blue and yellow of Ukraine's flag, won 6-2 and 6-1. The 27-year-old initially refused to play the match until the WTA and ATP said Russian and Belarusian players must compete as neutral athletes. The former world number three, who is the top seed at the tournament, also announced that she is donating her prize money from the event to Ukraine's army. That's the end of our radio sports news and back to you, the Super Memo. Thank you, Emmanuel Joseph Akile. You're listening to I Radio News and to end this bulletin, here's a recap of the headlines. <laughs> South Sudan government has backed the African Union's position which called on Russia to end hostilities and respect Ukraine's sovereignty. The medical charity MSF has suspended movements to support health facilities outside the A-Town following burning of two of its vehicles by a late NAS group of General Thomas Cirillo. And the Troika countries have condemned allegations of human rights violations and abuses, including killing, rape, and looting of humanitarian supplies in Unity State. That's the end of iRadio Afternoon News. You can get these stories and updates by subscribing to iRadio News Alerts on your MTN South Sudan number. Call 700 or dial star 700 hash and follow the instructions. If there is a story or an event you would like iRadio to cover or report about, please send us a text message on plus 211-912-986986. It's also a WhatsApp number. Follow us on Twitter at iRadio Juba. Like our Facebook page, iRadio, 
subscribe to our YouTube channel at iRadio South Sudan. You can also visit our website and listen to us online at www.iradio.org. Stay tuned for the news in Arabic at half past the hour. My name is Lasuba Memo. Thank you for listening and good afternoon. Thank you.